Alzheimer's disease affects 5 million people in the United States and 36 million globally, and it's on the rise. Now, one of the causes of Alzheimer's disease might be the class of drugs that are referred to as the benzodiazepines. These are anti-anxiety drugs, and they're widely prescribed, and they include drugs like Xanax and Valium and Clonopin, and many people take them for years and now there's this really strong, convincing link to Alzheimer's disease. So again, it turns out that we're guinea pigs just waiting to find out the side effects from another medication. That's so true. It's, it's with all of our drugs. I mean, it's not uncommon for a drug to be taken off the market 50 years after it went on the market. And we find out things all the time about drugs that we didn't suspect at the time. And you, you wonder how much of this information was never disclosed by the pharmaceutical industry because they have a track record of doing that. Well, the harms are often underestimated. Oh, almost always. Because, I mean, if you're not in the, if you don't have access to the information, then uh, you're not going to know about it. And if you do have access to the information and you have a conflict of interest, you're not going to tell about it. So anyway, another, um, another article shows that anti-anxiety drugs are among the most widely prescribed drugs in the world. Yeah. And that's a pretty big deal. Well, a lot of people have stress, and we haven't found a way to de-stress the population. We've got values that are not the best values to have. It's mostly about I, me, my, and mine. It's about our narcissistic needs, and they're mostly materialistic and, uh, and about money and power. That's not a way to build community and de-stress people. Well, here we're talking about an antidepressant that's, you know, in a different... An anti-anxiety drug. Yeah, an anti-anxiety drug that can probably cause Alzheimer's disease. Well, it, And we recently talked about... It hasn't, it hasn't been proven, but there's a strong association. Well, I said probably. Yeah, and so... I, enough of an association that it's, it's pretty worrisome. scary. Yeah, it's yeah. worrisome. I mean, you wouldn't... If you had any kind of signs of a memory issue, you probably wouldn't want to do that. I mean, this study that was done in Canada and France looked at 1,900 people in Canada uh, who had Alzheimer's disease, and then they looked back to see what their history was in terms of using anti-anxiety drugs five to ten years prior to the time that they had their symptoms. And so that really is, is giving you evidence that suggests that it's th these drugs that are accelerating the risk. If you just took them for three months, they found the risk was 50% higher. And if you took them for six months, it was like a, it doubled. And if you gave a larger dose, it was it was ran, it was linked in terms of the amount that you you gave and for how long. Yeah. Yeah. So it's a worrisome thing, and, and it's it's back to the old philosophy of what are we going to look for when we're trying to uh, manage people's problems? Simple uh, ways that don't serve them well to suppress their symptoms, or are we going to try and get to the underlying reasons for why they? have their anxiety or their well, insomnia The thing is, depression. too, is that they're often used for off-label use. So they're exactly. used for other things besides just depression and anxiety. That's they're true. Panic and post-traumatic stress disorder and sure. so forth. So well, I guess so they can sell more drugs. Well, that's, or people don't, they don't know what to do when people are upset. Well, so they want to give them a drug all the time. Well, when you don't have time to listen to people and, and really care about them in a personal way, uh, the instructions that you really are getting from your HMO or your big uh, medical group is get them back on their feet and back to work because that's what uh, that's what we're that's all we can do. You can't spend an hour and a half or two hours with somebody who's anxious or depressed. It, it just it isn't cost effective, at least uh, if you look at medicine that way. But if you're looking at a way to try and help people, you have to listen and care about them, and it takes time. Well, and the thing is, too, is that so somebody might say, oh, well, then let's just take another antidepressant. But we, Switch, we yeah. were just recently talking about a study that showed that the SSRIs can cause uh, coronary artery disease. And lots of other things that yeah. you don't want. And they're no better than placebo for mild to moderate depression. So here we go again. You know, we're looking at pharmaceutical ways to manage our symptoms. We're not looking for the... Uh, things that are really important, like lifestyle, the, the diet, exercise, stress, sleep, uh, eating, you know, good food, all those things that uh, will make us as healthy Getting as we can be. Getting out in nature, talking to your friends. Right. And Have, just... Having a meaningful purpose. I mean, these are all things that will keep us in community and maybe more interested in other people than just our own narcissistic needs. 
So when you're looking at, at, at Alzheimer's disease, it probably it's not a good idea to be thinking about handling their anxiety with these drugs. Yeah, and then I'm thinking if you think you're depressed and then you get Alzheimer's disease, you probably don't know what depression is. <laughs> well, maybe that's not the worst thing that could happen to you. <laughs> well, they might forget anyway. <laughs> that's the point.